Hello, everyone, and welcome to the International Fab Talks. Thank you for being a part of our journey, dear friends. Why are you with us on this beautiful journey? That's a big question, and I'll answer it for you. We have several unsung heroes, several celebrities, several people like you and me who are doing our very best for the society. It's not only for our lives. We do it for others as well. We live for others to create that beautiful space to make them also happy. Once we understand our mission in life, it's our duty and our aim, our mission to make others enable them to understand themselves, to understand the purpose of their lives in this universe. We are being joined today by a wonderful friend, a young person, all the way right from Calcutta, West Bengal, India. She is Rajeshree Mukherjee, who's joining us from there. She is a young lawyer with a lot of passion and dedication to work for the benefit of the common man. Hello, ma'am, and welcome to the session. I'm very much honored to be a part of International Path Talks and to be present here and get to be invited over here. Thanks for this wonderful evening. So sweet of you, ma'am. Actually, we should thank you for accepting the invitation and giving your time. In spite of having a busy schedule, you've taken out time for us. Thanks so much. It's an honor for me. Thank you, dear. My dear friends, it's time to introduce our guest in an official way, of course, with ma'am's permission. Yeah, ma'am, I'll go ahead and share your profile in an official way. Absolutely. Thank you, dear. My dear friends, let me just share the rich profile of our celebrity and guest. She is Miss Rajeshri Mukherjee. She is a young advocate by profession, practicing in the High Court, Calcutta, and other courts of Bengal as well, a social and a human rights activist, and as well as an educator. Rajeshri Ma'am completed her bachelor's degree with flying colors from Calcutta University and also completed a master's in law with wonderful results. As a young advocate, she has been doing many things on her own. She wants to really prove to the world that yes, a woman could do it. You could do it. No matter which gender you are, you could do it. She being a woman, she has taken up this beautiful journey of being an advocate and taking it up in her own hands and starting up her own partnership law firm, namely RK Associates, being the first generation female advocate after crossing several hurdles. She has been the president of Rotary Club at Toligunge, if I can get that right. Did I get that it's right, ma'am? Toligunge, you Yes, uh, that's the name, my friends. And she's been in this beautiful space for about two years, associated with this space for two years. And presently, she's associated with several NGOs and trusts. And she is even connected with an Italian NGO as their legal advisor. Rajeshri Ma'am has also been a legal advisor for many other corporate hubs as well at a very young age. And she has been awarded with several prizes, recognition and awards as well. In 2023, she has been awarded as the woman of the winner of the women of excellence. Let me put that right. In 2023, she has been awarded as the winner of the women of excellence award by Chalk and Duster 2023, where participants were from all parts of India and Sri Lanka as well. And therefore, the judges' choice to me Ananya award by uh, Nani Ghar. If I mispronounce anything, kindly forgive me, friends and ma'am, too. Further, she has been awarded with the Durga Saman Award from She by Shagufta Hanapi. And she has also won the title of winner of Army Miss Anumata, season one, by Rotary Club of Charnok City, which was a beauty pageant for a societal cause. She was an empaneled as an as the assistant public prosecutor of High Court Calcutta at a very young age and the first female to be empaneled at such young age in the High Calcutta High Court. In 2023, she had been empaneled as the state advocate under the government of West Bengal at Calcutta High Court and the first female advocate to hold the position at this age. She has also been advocating the basic women's rights and their legal rights to legal and legal aid camps and have uh, you know and has been doing this PIL matters on several human rights aspects now PIL that we'll get to know from ma'am it's a it's a it's a, a legal term what is it I'd like to know that and you too I'm sure if you are like me and friends she has also worked with the advocates of the Supreme Court of India and other senior advocates of high of the high court of Calcutta 
She has also received many other awards for her recognition in the society from the All India Human Rights and other organizations as well. Her achievements had been reported in many of the Bengali newspapers from time to time. Besides all of this, she is a wonderful speaker and an educator who has been teaching law students on different topics. She has worked very well for human, for human rights, apart from that, focusing on women's menstrual hygiene. How many of us take that initiative? You know, we think it is taboo, but there are people who are connected like this in a beautiful way. Not only with women, uh, women's menstrual hygiene, transgender rights, child education, and also for the sex workers who are all looked down upon by the society. And she has been always working for them for the betterment of the society, no matter which segment you are, she is standing up for your rights and willing to fight it out to make you live a beautiful life. She has always been the voice of others' pain in different ways and for which she has been recognized in the state of West Bengal and in India as well, my friends. She is one of the youngest ones to hold such respectable position because of her dedication and zeal. However, she says her life wasn't easy. As a child, she faced a lot of challenges to complete her education, but she did not give up with a lot of dedication, hard work, pure will, and the spirit of perseverance, she is able to reach to where she is today. And she would love all of you out there to be like that. She wants you to be the next person like her. And friends, during her tenure as the president of RCTY, she held many events and the largest fundraising event was Womania, where there were uh, many people present, many dignitaries, many celebrities were present. And the prominent personalities of West Bengal were present, including... Aloknanda Roy, Imran Zaki, Sarmishta Goshal, Anjali Ganguli, Shaira Shah Halim, and many more dignitaries. She has always taken keen interest in working for cancer patients as well through the fundraising events. She's donated huge amounts to the cancer patients. She's highly sincere and a woman of virtue. She is presently the secretary of Toligu. If I get that right, ma'am, can you please pronounce that for me? Uh, it's Toligan's Yuva Foundation. It's yes. a government registered trust. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am has pronounced that because I'm getting it wrong. Thank you so much, ma'am, for being kind. It's a reg registered trust working for the betterment of the society because she believes that serving humanity is serving God. And today she's here with us to share her views, her thoughts, and how she could empower you. Empower you. Now, what we want to do on International Fab Talks, empower each other. She's been empowered. She has the torch in her hand. She'd love to light up your lives as well. Hello, ma'am, and welcome to the session. Once again, thanks a lot. Thank you, ma'am. You have a wonderful profile, ma'am. Such a strong person you are. I've shared your profile, but all of us would now want to know who is the real you? Who is the real person? It's a very nice question put on me. I'm like a very simple human being like any other people around me. If uh, what I believe in life that if you have a zeal in your life and if you have confidence in yourself, you can do everything. It's just that you need to have that will inside you. Otherwise, the life is very difficult. And if you have that will inside you, then you can prove it to everyone. I mean, not only to yourself to your or to your family, but to everyone around you that, yes, we all can do something that we really wanted. So that's me. Yes, dear ma'am. Thank you, ma'am, for sharing that and empowering us too. If you have the will, they say where there is a will, there is a way. So have that strong will and be dedicated to that cause. You will really prove it to yourself and to others too. Dear ma'am, what inspired you to join into this legal profession? Because many of us are scared. If it's the law or the court, then how do you come to this? Who inspires you? First of all, I didn't have anyone who inspired me. Law ke liye. But uh, since my very childhood, I was determined to be a professional uh, person. So I was actually aspiring to become a doctor, but somehow my luck uh, did not want me to be a doctor. And one fine day, I saw my friends were preparing. Uh, I was in my 12th uh, finals at that point of time. My few of my classmates were preparing for the law entrance exam. At that point of time, I really had no idea that what law exactly is. Then slowly I started to know about it. One day I came back from the school and I started to study about it in YouTube. 
then i found it it's very interesting and then i started understanding that what is the importance of law in the society because nowadays we find every kind of injustice happening around us and specifically for the women because there is always a constant challenge to the women to prove themselves and to uh, prove the injustices happening towards them so that uh, is something that uh, urged me that chalo le, uh, pad lete hain law so i i mean uh, it was just for few days that i started uh, to study law and then i sat for the examination for the calcutta university law entrance but uh, unfortunately or fortunately god the god can only say that uh, i uh, got a very good result and i did a very good rank and then uh, that perhaps how i joined the law course and after all then uh, the t- there were 10 semesters in my in the five years law and uh, in each of the semesters i either was i was uh, first or second or third like this so that gave me more inspiration then i subsequently joined the high court and i started practicing which actually taught me that uh, yes there is lot to do for the society because there are many people who are going to the court every day for asking for their justice and there is uh, always something or the other way that they're not getting or it is being delayed so it's me i think that how i can stand for them to fight for them so that how it, it inspired me and i started studying law beautiful journey ma'am thank you so much for sharing that's an interesting one yes dear Do you ma'am like many of our viewers would have this in mind did you face any challenges as a woman did you face any uh, societal pressure ki bhai kyu padhna hai bhai shaadi ke hi karna hai did you ever face such a situation like that that why do you need to study maybe uh, i am blessed by god in this aspect that no i never faced any such situation where i had been forced not to study और तो चलो शादी कर लेते हैं या फिर ऐसा कुछ सिचुएशन अभी तक तो नहीं आया है राधा माई पेरेंट्स हैड ऑलवेज बिन मोटिवेटिंग मी यू विल हैव टू स्टडी यू विल हैव टू स्टडी बिकॉज यू आर अ वुमेन एंड यू विल हैव टू गेट दैट डिग्री सो दैट यू कैन प्रूव योर सेल्फ एंड नॉट लाइक एनी अदर वुमेन्स और द गर्ल्स who had been deprived of that yes my life had not been easy i had to struggle a lot because there were certain situations in my life uh there was days like this when i was studying in an icc board school in a flamboyant environment so one fine day it was like this that i couldn't pay my school fees and i was in class 9 at that point of time my name had been struck down i was standing outside the school to watch my friends to come out so that i could uh, i mean i could uh, know what has been taught for the day like this for there were several months but i did not stop there and my parents also didn't stopped they rather inspired me jao ja ke khada ho पूछो अपने दोस्तों को कि कि आज क्या पढ़ाई हुआ है अपने घर पे आके जो भी है उससे ही पढ़ो मेरे दोस्त लोग ने तभी बहुत हेल्प किया था मुझे देर वेर मेनी ऑफ द सीनियर्स ऑफ माई स्कूल हू हेल्प मी विद बुक्स बिकॉज दैट एट दैट पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम इवन आई हैड नो मनी टू बाय अ बुक फॉर माई सेल्फ मैं घर पे बैठ के पढ़ती थी देर वॉज नॉट इवन इलेक्ट्रिसिटी बैक एट माई होम आई वॉज हैविंग अ टू स्टोरेड बिल्डिंग बट देर वॉज नो इलेक्ट्रिसिटी देर वॉज नो वॉटर i had been uh, going through such days because of such financial crunches all of a sudden because life is never easy and it cannot be always the same there are ups and downs so i had been but i accepted the challenge and uh, luckily my parents my surroundings everyone supported me and with that gesture with that uh, motivation i studied i completed my 9 my 10 then i appeared for my science in 11 and 12 and that's how i completed in uh, like that way but honestly saying there had no not been such situation where i had been pressurized for getting married no not at all that's really nice and i like the way you said you know we all face difficulties and financial difficulty is one and as a student you faced it so boldly with your parents you've taken help of your classmates and all of that and you come up like you said no electricity no water but still you were able to face all the difficulties and emerge victorious i will just say one thing over here that life will always give you some certain challenges in life but it is you who will have to think how to overcome those challenges challenges because otherwise you will always be giving yourself an excuse these are nothing but an excuse if i have a will that was how i proved it to my own self that yes i have the will i will have to study because uh, if i have education inside me no one can stop me for becoming what i want to and then what a pain can do nothing else can do that is the reason we say that a pain is always mightier than a sword that's it i had always believed in that 
Oh, great. That's really nice. Beautiful, ma'am. Dear ma'am, that's really nice to meet people like you. You know, this is what we want to do. You know, we want your stories to reach out to youngsters out there to get the courage not to give up on life. Nothing is easy. Nobody has it easy. Everybody has something or the other. Only thing you have to be prepared to face all difficulties boldly, like our celebrities. Wonderful, ma'am. I really like the way you overcome all the challenges. Now we'll come to your professional space. Now, as a professional, what are the challenges you face in your day-to-day -day activities? First of all, I'm a woman, and that too, the first generation advocate. So obviously, there is a huge challenge to myself. In and to, there is always a struggle for existence that we do in high in the court. Because there is no one to give me a backup. There is no one to help me with the briefs. There is no one to bring me matters. It is me who will have to work hard, make my own reputation each and every day. And it is always me who has to prove every day within the court premises that yes, I'm not wrong. And that yes, I, I can be trusted because in our profession, what there's one uh, most important element, element that works, that is trust. If no one can trust on me, they will not give me any matter or they will not uh, give me any matter to do or to appear before the court. I will have to gain the trust. So in every day when I go to the court, rather I wake up and go to the court, it's like I have to prove to myself that yes, I'm trustworthy, first and foremost. The next, yes, I'm dedicated. Third, yes, I have to give my best. I'm hardworking. Because I have no, uh, I mean, a passage for any smart work or there is no one to give me backup. Like there is no one for me. It is me who has to be there for me every day. And I will have to maintain that balance. I mean, that uh, reputation each and every day when I go to the court. And first, I mean, the last and the most important thing. I cannot have a scam. I cannot be like that. Ye, ye ki to achhi nahi hai. Iska to ye hai. Is ye to aise hai. Ye to waise hai. No. She is a respectable one. She can be loved. She is a very good human being. Each and every day I will have to prove. That is how I'm maintaining it. And each and every day I'm like fighting with my struggle for existence. That's really nice. Beautiful ma'am. Thank you for expressing that so well. Dear ma'am, you working for the sex workers, child's rights, women's rights, and all of that. So, they don't They want high-profile cases. You know, they want the big parties, if, if I'm getting that right. But you focusing on this beautiful part where no one gives much of attention. What made you come and think like, yeah, I could give my time for these people. Jinke awaz nahi bahar nikalti hai. Ye nikle to bhi usko dawai jati hai. To main inki awaz ban jau. To apko kaisa laga? Aisa kya laga ki aap in se jude rehne ka ek feeling? Chayad iske liye, mera bachpan, mera sa, I mean, uh, my childhood had been my supportive part over here. The thing what I have faced in my life, I don't really want anyone around me to face the same thing. Because I faced that pain when I was standing outside the school. Because even if I say that, the person around me will take advantage of me. So I started putting myself on the same foot. अच्छा मेरे पास चलो जो भी है मैं थोड़ा सा इनको देने से तो मैं गरीब तो नहीं हो जाऊंगी एटलीस्ट थोड़ा सा तो उसका हेल्प हो जाता है लाइक दिस इज हाउ आई स्टार्टेड इट इज सिंस माय कॉलेज डेज आई यूज्ड टू डू अ लॉट ऑफ ट्यूशंस इन रादर सिंस क्लास 9 ऑनवर्ड्स फॉर आई मीन टू कंटिन्यू माय एजुकेशन आई स्टार्टेड गिविंग ट्यूशंस आई वाज ओनली जस्ट 14 इयर्स ऑफ एज फ्रॉम व्हेन आई स्टार्टेड डूइंग ट्यूशंस सो फ्रॉम दैट पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम आई स्टार्टेड सेविंग अ लिटिल लिटिल अमाउंट कोई भी मेरे को ऐसा दिख जाता था कि किसी के पास कुछ है नहीं अरे इट्स नॉट ऑलवेज अबाउट मनी दैट आई यूज टू गिव देम तुम्हारे पास खाना नहीं है ठीक है चलो मैं खाना मैं खुद खाऊंगी नहीं ऐसे नहीं चलो आपके लिए भी करते हैं दिस इज हाउ आई ग्रो द इंटरेस्ट फॉर द चाइल्ड स्लोली देन केम द पार्ट वेन आई फाउंड दिस सेक्स वर्कर्स वेन आई वॉज इन द लॉ कॉलेज वी हैव टू स्टडी अ लॉट ऑफ सब्जेक्ट वी हैव टू बी सोशलाइज we had to know the social i mean uh, problems that our society was facing so that's how i started understanding like this sex workers are also women 
like we are putting our finger on them but can we uh, understand the pain that they are having when i'm at their back or standing on their shoes that's how i tried realizing about them so every year since 2020 uh, onwards what i do from my uh, previously it was from rotary club of tolligans yuva and presently it's from my trust like a kola i mean combining it together with what we do every year during pujo i mean durga puja hopefully everyone is aware of durga puja because it's uh, ma durga is uh, called to be the epitome of strength so during the puja durga durga puja and i think everyone is also aware of that that a uh, durga pratima i mean the durga deity and the idol is not complete or it is not made without the soil of nishiddha palli nishiddha palli means the land of the sex workers so with that soil the durga pratima is made so i ensure it that on every mahalaya we celebrate or rather we start durga puja with them uh, on every durga puja we give donate them new sarees we uh, talk to them we spend a, a lot of time with them no i mean understanding their problems or what they are facing so so that we could at least bring a little bit of smile on their face so that's how i uh, try to stand beside them not though i cannot reach to every of the sex workers it's not possible but at least if to at least 100 or 200 or 500 as many women we can we just try and that's how uh, i can get a little bit of peace when i go to sleep so that's how it started all about that's really nice and i like the way you put it i can go to sleep in peace i've done my bit i've understood Absolutely. their pain i've tried to help them out in my own way yes Absolutely. that's really nice ma'am what about child's rights because see this is one very important children are very innocent they don't know what's happening to them they can't express it even if they express it they are, it's not uh, given importance so it's brushed away either by parents or elders so how do you deal with these cases ma'am have they come to you how have you taken this point first of all uh, hopefully the viewers can uh, understand or i think they are already aware india has a huge population and the concept of child labor is very common in india in every part of india child labor is scattered like anything though our indian constitution prohibits and this child labors but still for the existence this people allows their child whosoever who is below 14 years of age they goes they helps in the brick factories they help in the different labor factories to earn something for the survival of their family that is something we need to stop so whenever i see such kind of children first of all around me or whenever such kind of cases comes up i try my best to put or uh, to put or rather to un- make them understand the uh, importance of education because that is the one thing which can change their life so first and my first and foremost work is to put them into a system of education so that's how i try my best to help them to come out of that system of child labor next now it is the concept of pokso whenever there is any kind of uh, sexual uh, harassment on the child on the children whether it be a male or a female children there are even cases in india i had um, a few of my cases only where i found the children are of just uh, four or five years who had been molested like they cannot even understand what molestation is or what is being done with them but they are not liking it that's something that they can only express i try my best to counsel them to talk to them in the best possible way and try to create a good environment and sometimes even the family environment is also responsible for such situations so i try my best to stand against against such kind of situations and to prohibit those kind of uh, i mean uh, things that is happening for the child because if a child is traumatized at that point of age like when she is only or he is only might be 5 or 6 years or maybe 10 years just it is like a trauma that she or he will be bearing for the rest of the lives so i try my best to uh, do um, counseling sessions for them to provide the legal aid camp so this is how we are even visiting different schools uh, the primary schools and the government uh, secondary and uh, primary both the schools and try to make them realize what is a good touch what is a bad touch or how you should uh, reciprocate whenever any kind of unwanted things are happening with them so that's how uh, we try to do about the child rights and the last the two points i have already discussed 
education because any kind of rights can come up whenever there is an education. If I don't know what is my right, I cannot be, I will not be able to save myself or to ask for giving me my right. It's my education first, which can help me to do that. So I try my best. I organize different kinds of educational programs throughout the year by distributing books and uh, copies. Even we have taken one, there is one of my NGO I'm associated with, Ma, namely Ma Foundation, where we have taken up a school in Jhala area. It's under the uh, Sundarban district, where we have, uh, there are many uh, very underprivileged uh, children who are not even able to give just even rupees 50 rupees as a monthly, uh, I mean, fees. So we have started doing uh, educational uh, classes over there, like class one, two, there are uh, five classes till class five. So we are doing that. We are trying to, uh, I mean, grow that school as much possible. We are holding many kinds of camps amongst underprivileged uh, mothers and fathers, teaching them that what they should uh, do for their children, for the benefits of their children. So this is how I'm trying to do for the child rights. Perfect, ma'am. That's really very nice. It's a, it's a joy to know that you are doing so much for them. Dear ma'am, we have now women across India. Highly educated women also suffer from domestic violence, dowry. And it's a shame. In my eyes, it's a shame. In spite of being educated, there are several women are trapped in this. And they are quiet about it because either the family pressure or they have children with them. It's not only dowry is not only the issue with women. There are several other things that come for a married. I'm talking only about married women now. Next, we will talk about unmarried women, what, what they face. Now, how many cases like this have come to you? And what you're able to do for them who are in this trap of dowry? First of all, it's a mindset that we have made in our society. It is the women, us only, who have just created this. The husbands are obviously the one who are doing the tortures and everything. But how these husbands are coming to know about these things from their parents? I mean, the mother is the one who is teaching the son, like, you should behave like this or you, or you might behave like this. Because this is how we grow up. We see our parents. And that's how we grow up. So I think it is a mindset, first and foremost, that every woman need to change as well. Whenever we are talking about the women's rights only, it is the women only who is responsible again. The husbands are the uh, second generation or what we can say. And the next and the most important thing, education is a part of life. Education can change a human being uh, a lot, a lot. Even if I take 100%, it's the education which, which can change a man uh, or a person. You, we can say like 70%. But that 30% is very harmful and that also important. That 30% comes from the surrounding, where you are born and brought up. I have high education, but I'm ill-mannered. So that's how uh, the bad things will be imbibed in me. And then only it will come like I will be torturing my husband, uh, wife. I will be beating her. I will be abusing her in mentally, physically, in every possible way. So for every, I mean, uh, human being, whether be it a husband or a woman, I mean, wife, it is like both of them must have a very good behavior towards each other and mutual respect, which is lacking nowadays. The husbands are having so much of ego that women are earning that they are being independent. This is not being accepted by the society. And that is how, whether you are, in, I mean, educated or not educated, or whether you are from a very rich family or a poor family or a middle-class family, there are cases of domestic violence. So it's us who can only change ourselves. In case of the, the domestic violence cases, what I suggest my, because I have been, I am, mostly my clients are women in case of the domestic violence. I don't take up male cases much. It's only a, handful of the male cases I have taken up but I will be talking about the women only so in case of the women cases till now my clients have been I mean also have been approached me as their advocate I have been asking them whether you are right or wrong first tell me that if you have done anything wrong then also tell me or if you have not done anything be be honest to yourself and be honest to me whenever they're honest with me or rather my 
uh, clients have been uh, touch out my I mean like I'm lucky in that way as well my clients has been honest and they have the, got the orders accordingly from the court in case of the maintenance case in case of the dowry prohibition cases in even in case of the domestic violence cases in most of the cases I could uh, give them the police protection I could get them a very good order from the high court a high court and as well as from the lower courts uh, for give, getting a good amount of maintenance for them for their children and that's the, the how the cases are being going on and there had been certain phone bank cases we know which are true cases uh, like where they had been really tortured there are several cases like that in fact uh, just a few days ago only i have filed a new case where the wife had been tortured for 15 years she's a highly educated woman i mean uh, she's a dance teacher in a very reputed college she's a phd scholar just imagine she herself being a phd scholar she had been going through such a difficult situation for the 15 long years. Now she couldn't resist it anymore. She opened her mouth. So for her, we are fighting. Till now we had been on a very good, I mean, line of action as well. So I try my best to provide my assistance to the women. I'm also part, I'm at present the secretary of the uh, All India Human Rights Commission as well from West Bengal. So on the human rights aspect also, I try my best to give them all kinds of protections from the police from the society, from the different women organizations so that nothing wrong happened to them. It is not only for her, and this was for many other cases. And there had been several other cases where the opponent side could not, over, I mean, win over me. So that's my pleasure. And that's the maybe the blessing of God that if I'm right, this is what I also always believe that if you're correct, there is always, it might be justice is uh, delayed. Justice may be delayed, but it will be there always. So that's my motto and that's how I try to be with them. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much for explaining all of that so well. You've even given us a case study also. Ma'am, now what is in my mind is what I have noticed around all these years, meeting different people, talking to different people, women in, in particular, that they suffer from domestic violence, which is invisible. If they have two thappad, they will have a lot of pain. They will have that physical, the heart to die, jala die, to dikta wo dusron ko. Lekin bhoat sare behne aise jo dikti nahi unka taklif in the domestic violence. Ki bhai, that is mental torture, emotional torture, financial uh, torture over there, all of this. To wo dikta nahi bahar walon ko. To how do these people approach you to come out of the situation? Because I know of a person, like she's been into this for at least 25 years plus, almost 30 years, just for the children. She, she was like a silent sufferer of all of this. And as you said, she's from the educational background, the, the one just you mentioned. The same one, this client is also from the educational background. In this case, she has nothing to prove that this is Gali Guloch Har Rosunna, Jobi Karti, Dart Milti. So it's like that. But out, they are the best couple, but in, this is it. So for such type of candidates, which is across India and the world as well, what suggestion you have? as a lawyer, as an advocate? Firstly, India ke to almost har ghar ki baat ye hai. Ki hamesha, it's not like the thappar jo hume dikhti hai. Jo bhi kitna bhi aap kar lo, aapko to gali sunna hi hoga because you are a woman. Kyunke aap woman ho. Aap larki ho, aapko sunna hi hoga. Ye aapka kaam hai ghar pe kahana pakana, to bhi pocha karna. Ye, uh, jitna bhi ghar ka kaam hai, ye aapka hi kaam hai. Whether you are outside or not, घर पे आके आपको तो ये करना ही होगा अगर नहीं किए तो इस उसी तुरंत आपका आई मीन सास आपका हस्बैंड सब कोई आपके पीछे पड़ जाएगा बट आई बिलीव इफ यू आर अ वुमेन एंड ऑफ अ स्ट्रांग कैरेक्टर एंड व्हेनेवर सच थिंग्स आर हैपनिंग टू यू यू विल हैव टू रेज योर वॉइस बिकॉज़ दोस डेज आर गॉन बाय व्हेन आई मीन व्हेन यू आर साइलेंट अगर आप चुप रहोगे तो चुप ही रहना पड़ेगा और आपको सब कुछ सहना होगा you will have to record each and everything. Jo bhi kuch, jab bhi kuch ho hai, record it. Haan, ab galat kar raho, to mujhe haq hai ki mere saath kuch injustice ho raha hai, main record karungi usko. Agar ab mujhe gali de raho, haan, mujhe right hai usko record karne ke liye. So I will do that. Immediately call the police. If anything within the house it is happening. Hoi sa tak, kyunki gali de na bhi ek julm hai. And that is also covered under 498A in India. Okay, whenever there is any financial assistance that you are not getting from your husband. Haan, abhi isme to bahut sare abhi bhi cheez hai, like, uh, 
मैं ये भी नहीं बोलूंगी कि इट इज ऑलवेज द हजबेंड विल हैव टू लुक आफ्टर द वीमेन इफ शी इज कैपेबल एनफ टू अर्न देन शी मस्ट डू दैट बिकॉज अभी वो जमाना चला गया कि वुमेन आई मीन लड़की लोग सिर्फ घर पे ही रहेंगे नहीं ये अपने खुद के खुद को इंडिपेंडेंट बनाने के लिए आपको अर्न करना होगा सो इट इज अ मैसेज फॉर ऑल द व्यूअर्स हुर सेंग मी फॉर ऑल द वीमेन कि हाँ प्लीज Uh, have your own earning might be it is of 5 rupees or maybe your 10 rupees or 50 rupees but have your own earnings so that you can do or you don't need to always put your hand before your husband ki aap mujhe thoda sa ye de do aap mujhe thoda sa wo de do mujhe ye khareedna hai ya fir wo karna hai nahi aapka khud ka aapka i mean uh, you have your own prestige you have your own uh, respect hamesha aapke husband ke samne haath phailane ki zarurat nahi hai so if you are capable enough capable means if you are educated If you have the physical strength, then do it. Because if uh, husband कर भी लेना आज कभी ना कभी वो जाके तो बोलेगा ही. So yes, you will have to be independent. To avoid any such circumstance, you will have to be independent. That is only how you can stand against this kind of odds. और जब भी आप लोग मुंह खोलोगे ना तो automatically वो आपको दो दिन गाली देगा, तीन दिन वो भी सोचेगा. अरे ये तो मैं every day और तो नहीं कर सकती. लेकिन you will have to retaliate. So that only how you can protect yourself in such kind of situations kyunki har har ghar ka ye kahani ban chuka hai abhi nahi to aur kya ghar next day jaako jao court mein khade ho ke divorce kar lo but that's not also the solution even if or it is with everyone like ghar ke andar bahar jahi kahi par bhi agar aapke sath kai annay kuch ho raha hai like any wrong is happening to you you must say against it you must raise your voice that's how it will work out yes dear my dear sisters you have to break the silence don't suffer in silence mukh khol ke bol do ki bhai ye sab ho raha hai to kam se kam nyay to milegi aapko you no need to suffer in silence kaun sahi kaun galat wo hai jo proof to rahega to ho jao ma'am ye bhi dekha hai ma'am the the woman is educated she is earning but she is not having the authority to share her income with her family members उनके माँ बाप को थोड़ा हम पैसे दे देंगे मैं कमा रही हूँ तो वो थोड़े जो हस्बैंड्स है जो इन लॉज है वो एक्सेप्ट नहीं करते जो भी आप कमा रहे हो वो हमारा हो गया तो यहाँ पर भी बहुत सारे विमेन्स जो विमेन जो है बाहर बहने हैं तो सफर होते हैं तो दे वॉन्ट टू सीक्रेटली गिव समथिंग टू देर पेरेंट्स ओपनली दिए तो लड़ाई झगड़ा होता तो सीक्रेटली दिए उनको पता भी होगा पता हो गई तो वो बड़ी बात हो जाती है झगड़े का तो दीज आर द डिफरेंट वेज वेमेन आर सफरिंग सो इन दिस केस what you have to say see again here it is us only who are liable for this because we have allowed them to take the authority so jab bhi aapka shaadi hota hai and you, you are earning it is your right to uh, i mean look after your parents just like the husband is looking after his parents it is your right so if you don't allow them from the initial days then this things will not happen so it is from the very initial days of your marriage only you should not allow your husband or your in-laws family to take an authority over you aapka kamai hai aap dekhoge aur samjhoge ki aapko kis kaha pe kaise kaise usko divide karna hai and it is a lawful duty and right to maintain your uh, parents because there are supreme court guidelines and according to section 125 of crpc it is the uh, i mean um, the duties of the uh, daughters to look after their parents whether you are married or unmarried so they have also their right to claim it from you so this is a legal and lawful right so aapko kisi ko kisi se darne ki koi zarurat nahi hai agar ek din jhagra hai to hone dijiye do next i mean the second month mein jhamela hoga hone dijiye third month mein jhamela hone dijiye fourth month se ye log chup kar jayenge so this is how only it will work aapko apke i mean whatever you are doing you will have to be strict with that ha mujhe apna parents ko dekhna hai because they are your parents लड़के लोग बहुत कुछ बोलेंगे आई मीन योर इन लॉज भी बहुत कुछ बोलेंगे अगर ऐसा होता है तो कभी बोल के देखो अपने हस्बैंड को आप देखना छोड़ दो आपके पेरेंट्स को आपका पेरेंट्स पेरेंट्स होता है तो मेरा भी पेरेंट्स पेरेंट्स होता है सो लाइक दैट यू विल हैव टू से इट हॉट अदरवाइज यू विल हैव टू ऑलवेज बियर विथ वट एवर इज है लेट एनी वन टेक अथॉरिटी ओवर यू यू आर नॉट अ प्रॉपर्टी आर वुमेन इज नॉट अ प्रॉपर्टी द टू सोल्स आर जस्ट गेटिंग टूगेदर लविंग इच अदर एंड बींग फ्रेंड्स फॉर द रेस्ट ऑफ द लाइफ but not buying or selling any it's not a property that they are doing that they will take an authority over you so you will have to realize that so then only you can i mean prohibit or you can eradicate such things from the society and from your mindset that's how we can overcome this 
Yes, dear ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am, for sharing all of that. Thank you very much. Ma'am, we have seen this too. Elderly mothers, elderly mothers are silently suffering the abuse from their own children. Usually the sons. Bachpan mein to bete ekdam attachment ho jata hai, maa se chhodta bhi nahi will be behind her. But at one point of time, the same son who loved her so much has become the reason for her pain, listening to his wife. And there are several mother-in-laws being beaten brutally by the daughter-in-laws. So, what are these cases that you have to do with them? Yes, I have to do with many such cases and it's still running now. If we look a little back of the Indian history, there were no so much of, uh, I mean, old age homes. There were hardly few old age homes. क्योंकि तब ना बहुत हाथ को गिने लोग बाहर पढ़ने के लिए जाते थे या फिर जॉब करने के लिए जाते थे अभी तो I mean everyone who is passing out their graduations or completing their graduations they have the mentality मुझे बाहर जाना है it is like India is having one of the best opportunities for everyone but till then like it's like of it it's kind of a passion that it has become that people are going abroad for the studies and not staying back. They don't realize that their parents are aging up. One day, either your mother or father will lose either of their partners and they will be alone. And they, it is you who will have to because you need to idealize or uh, you rather you need to think when you were a child, where you were very little, they did not leave your hands, so you should not leave their hands. And that is the reason there were no, no, I mean, no such kind of laws called Senior Citizens Act, which has been coming. Uh, I mean, it's now prevailing since 2019 onwards. The Senior Citizens Act, where the pet, I mean, uh, the parents cannot be thrown out whenever you are crossing the age of 60. The, it is a rightful duty of the children to look after the parents, and they cannot throw the senior citizens from the from the house, and they have many kind of liabilities to look after them. So, because the government also realized that yes, this kind of things are happening. There were, there, I mean, nowadays there are so many old age homes. Half of the parents are like, uh, the children are going abroad. They're not even looking back after the parents and they are going to the old age homes. They cry silently, the, the thing that you said. Like, they try to, I mean, they are, they are in so much of arts to talk to their children who are staying abroad, but they are hardly bothered about them. This is nothing but because of the, uh, I mean, uh, the, westernization and the modernization that has grew up in the mind but we shall not forget that it's our parents who has given the birth who has given us the birth so we must not do any such kind of thing which gives or hurts them so and it is our duty utmost duty to as to prioritize my family like my uh, wife or children it is also my duty to pri give priority to my parents to look after them which is lacking and that is the reason this kind of new laws have are coming up in the society to protect the rights of the senior citizens and that's how we can uh, we are rather our uh, judicial system are trying to eradicate this kind of problems yes excellently answered ma'am with lots of proof and information as well ma'am we've seen this going on quite extensively in the recent past that is acid attack victims i've been interviewing three victims and i've asked them what about the perpetrator has he been in prison? And they tell me they have he is not in prison. The three of them, all of them, different, they are different people in each of their cases. The perpetrator is not arrested, he is at large. He is just free. Now, just when I'm sharing this with you, it gives me a scare at the, you know, a chills in my body. If, uh, or how should I say that? You know, goosebumps. Yes, a spine of my uh, uh, a chill on my spine, or how can I put that? It's very scary. What if they come again and attack them? Already, to unka ekar diya, pura disfigure kar diya, pura face pura badal gaya. Kya wo fir badle ke aag mein, fir aake unko attack kar sakte hain. Wo to dar mein to jeetne rehte na fir, you know. And how can then who is going to fight for these acid victims? When are these people going to be arrested? And if they could do it to one woman, they could also do it to other women as well. You know what is the law doing about it? And why is the law not catching those people who are responsible for disfiguring, you know, the entire body of a particular person? A very nice question, because the rest of the questions were very, uh, I mean, uh, habitual ones that I, I generally answer. But this is absolutely a different one. But uh, astonishingly, yesterday I had a legal camp in Calcutta only 
on acid victims in a hawker's market. So when I was actually uh, speaking about the acid victims, I had been engaged I, uh, since uh, during my college days only, I had been interning as a law student in many NGOs. So one of them was HRLN, so uh, Human Rights Law Network. Uh, currently, it's uh, closed down in India. It's, uh, it was also an international based uh, I mean, law network NGO. So what happened and when I was doing my internship over there, I came across many such uh, acid victims. Until today, I'm uh, in touch with them and I work for them and uh, on a very regular basis, uh, I work with them as well. So since as I was telling yesterday, only I had a talk, I mean, a uh, legal aid cap on this thing. The acid victims or rather the acid attacks is something that is really very terrorizing because we are also women. Whenever we are moving on the road, uh, we have to be uh, have to be always uh, cautious if something wrong is whether any wrong is happening with me as well. In regard to the uh, justice system or the legal system of India, in regard to this particular sector of acid victims, uh, in uh, Lakshmi versus Union of India in two thousand thirteen, there was a I mean uh, judgment that which are the acids which are banned to be used in India. No one can nowadays can sell the assets openly because if we can stop this part, then maybe we can uh, put a ba uh, rather if we, we may be able to control a little, little bit of the acid attacks because if it is available easily, then only the attacks will start happening more. So if we have to, we have to initially control that part. So there had been this judgment where it has been laid down that how the compensations will be given to the acid victims, how the procedures will be happening or how the uh, judicial system will be functioning. And accordingly, section 326A and B had been incorporated in the Indian Penal Code in 2013, where it has specifically talked about the compensation scheme, the legal procedural part, and the imprisonment part, and the fine also that is levied on them. Again, I will tell one thing that justice is delayed, but justice will be there because it's not always, it's the court system or the Indian, it is maybe the fallacy of the Indian constitution or we can say the fallacy of the justice system that it is a little delayed because we are burdened with, uh, the judicial system is burdened with different kinds of cases. So we cannot expect that if you're filing a case today, it will get, get end by this year or maybe uh, within a few months. No, it takes time. It takes a lot of time, but there will be a time when uh, the person will be arrested when the person will be convicted and a compensation will be awarded by the uh, appropriate court of law. So it is like you will have to have some patience. Uh, or, or And one more thing, the question that ma'am you have asked me that if they have something like that, then they have something like that. Look, this is something like that. Uh, because this is something which is into the fate or maybe an astrologer could suggest neither a judicial person like me or a, um, uh, I mean a prestigious woman like you or anyone around us can predict whether certain rather we also don't know if it is going to happen with us in the next moment right now we are talking sitting uh, and talking about this but we ne never know the next moment it's happening with us or not but yes once again I will tell that might be your eyes are not in a proper condition or maybe your face is not a proper condition, but your soul is within you. That is your, I mean, identity. Your face is not your identity. Your skin color is not your identity or your hair or anything is not your identity. Your soul is your identity. Till the time you have your soul inside this body, you are existing and you are that person who was before the acid attack and who is still today that person after the acid attack. So it is you from the within, inside yourself, will have to have that power within you. Ki koi bhi kuch kar le, mera de, mera ye pura jo hai, wo de, lekin main zinda mera bhi bhi, uh, I have my own prestige, I have my respect, I have everything within me. And I'm a woman. And one more thing I would like to say that it is not only the women who are facing these acid attacks, it is even the men. Recently, there had been a big case in West Bengal, Thairul. I think the whole, uh, I mean, media system had been full. Uh, I mean, full with this particular video. Like it is, uh, it came up because of some property issue between the family members only. Okay, it is uncle who did it to the uh, his brother. I mean, uh, brother's son. So it is. I mean, uh, 
most of the cases aisa hota hai ki we find the female suffering from it but it is no more like that we human beings have become so more animalistic that we are not living our own family members only and it is not only uh, i mean the family members or human beings even this acid attacks are happening on the uh, animals on cats and dogs yesterday only we were talking about all these things like we human beings have how much we have changed like god created with so much of beauty with us but we have lost that beauty and everything that humanity and we are not even living as mere animals who cannot even speak or uh, neither they have any enmity enmity with us we are not even living them so there will be full of such kind of people around us because human mind is very uh, i mean unpredictable and very complex so it is us who have to be strong to fight each and every situation and we never know what is happening with us at what moment of time but we'll have to have patience to have, bring the justice and yes you will have to have faith in the judicial system because either today or tomorrow the uh, person will also be, be convicted i mean he will be arrested he will be convicted and you will be getting a compensation but yes it is you who will have to have faith in your own self that's it yes dear yes ma'am thank you ma'am for sharing and yes uh, acid attack is not only on women it could be on men it could be on animals yes dear i accept that dear ma'am don't uh, i this is my personal uh, thinking when somebody disfigures somebody like that to that extent life long that person has to be you know this completely disfigured from head to toe so these uh, the perpetrators they should be hanged to death they should not be just given some type this is just my personal opinion i mean no harm to any body or any law or anything i just feel when one could go to that extreme of dis disfiguring somebody for life that person has no right to live no he should get get this death penalty or you know death sentence should be there there's no excuse for that for disfiguring people i feel that i don't know if i'm right or wrong that's what i just want to put a full stop there yes now in cases of where the rape cases like the nirbhaya case and that is like death to ye to wo to death mar gayi na to fir bhi unko phansi lag gayi to yahan par jo hai to har din ek din unka ek maut ka din hai every morning they look in the mirror it's like death for them it's like nobody will accept them with that face they are not getting jobs they are not getting a good partner later on agar mila to bhi kitne der tak wo to you know uh, loyal rahenge wo is tarah ki bahut har din maut unke samna pad karna padta hai So maybe i think the law should be more strict and it should go so we change the topic we don't go there more because it becomes controversial again you know i should not say something more ma'am what about menstrual hygiene in what way you as a lawyer are able to contribute to people becoming aware of menstrual hygiene first of all it is a very uh, close and very favorite topic to me because uh, previously i myself uh, believed in the different kind of tab taboos that our society had you must not visit the puja or you must not enter into the kitchen room you must not uh, do aarti to the i mean or you cannot do anything during your menstrual things one sudden or uh, fine uh, i mean day it came up in my mind that why not it's like that is something I mean, okay. Yes, dear. So that is something that is giving me the identity of me being a woman because without menstruation, uh, menstruation, I am not a woman. That is my pride. So if that is my pride, why something? Uh, I need to. I need. Like, why do I need to hide it, or why do I need to be ashamed of it? This is a mental, or a, it's like a uh, what I share, uh, tell. Rather, it's a, a thought. Okay, that has been in our mind. since the time in memorial because this is a kind of thing that had been in the mind of our parents or uh, in our in the minds of our uh, grandparents or in the uh, previous era because that time the women were not that much highly educated to understand what exactly menstruation is if we can imbibe this education amongst everyone whether an underprivileged one or any illiterate person i think if not today but tomorrow they will understand what the thing is it is not something you should be ashamed and it's not a the thing that we always tell that it's a bad blood of your body no it's not a bad bl blood or nothing it's just a blood of your body that is passing by you will have to accept it and 
the main thing talking about the menstrual hygiene we until date if we could go to the different parts of india we will find that people i mean the women use uh, i mean uh, cloths pieces of cloths which they wash again and again they use it which is absolute i mean absolutely unhealthy for the female bodies that is how the bacteria and the germs grow up and that is how the uterus system dysfunctions and the uterine cancers comes up so if we can make the underprivileged or uh, the women who are not so literate about this particular topic that these are nothing but the instead of using this kind of uh, i mean cloth piece of cloth we can uh, let them or help them buy uh, or use a piece of napkin that is more healthy for the body and now this the, there are tampons there are many menstrual cups though i cannot expect uh, the illiterate or maybe the underprivileged one to accept or to use them but at least a sanitary napkin is easily available to everyone around and th that is the reason since 2020 onwards i have been distributing uh, throughout the year in different parts of west bengal uh, the, i mean in bulk the san sanitary napkins so that instead of using the cloth they use the sanitary napkins and to, and this is how they can prevent this uterus cancer because nowadays uterus cancer is very common in every of the women once they are crossing 40 years of age because at that point of time they are all start and they start having this menstrual uh, end of menstruation system or this menstrual side cycle and that is the point of time when they suffer from this uterine cancer so it is at the initial level if you could we, if we could make them understand the use of using the menstrual i mean the menstrual hygiene as a part in their life so that's how we do legal aid camp i mean these menstrual camps in different parts of west bengal and we donate them this uh, sanitary napkins so that's how we are empowering them in that way yes dear. yes ma'am Thank you, ma'am, for sharing all of that. That's really very nice to educate people with regard to their menstruation cycle and how they could face later on problems if at all they don't maintain a good hygiene, and they keep like you know uh, using the same cloth, you know every day. Okay. So it's good to have hygiene, hygienic way of dealing with this process, the beautiful process of menstruation, which makes you a complete woman. Yes, dear, dear ma'am. Now you've been also connected with the transgenders. In what way? Because transgenders' lives are also very sad and pathetic. They have been treated very badly. They are being treated as well till date as we talk now. They are treated and looked down upon very badly. So how are they connected to you? What is your contribution to this beautiful community? Uh, I'm blessed that I have many transgender friends. So like uh, that is the more reason how I can understand them or maybe that gives me more interest to work with them. So uh, in my college only, I had a few of my, I mean, uh, seniors who are trans women and trans men. I have many colleagues who are my friends who are trans men and they are also trans women. Like I also say that when I was working in HRLN as a, I'm an intern, I came across many other uh, trans people around. And even uh, with one of the big, uh, I mean, famous face of Kolkata, the trans, Hijra Bodka, I mean, uh, she was the president, Ranji Dadi. I had been working with her as well. There are many other people who, with whom I have worked. The first and foremost is, even I have trans clients as well. <laughs> that is uh, another beautiful part. Uh, first and foremost, don't, uh, I mean, uh, categorize them. This is my uh, thought that I would like to share to everyone. That don't categorize them. Because there's just like a woman and a male, I mean, a male or a female like us only. It's just their, I mean, appearance is a little different. But if you talk to them, it is like you and me, they have the same emotions. They have the same feelings. They have the same lifestyle, same, uh, I mean, uh, education, or maybe the same food habit and everything. So they're not different. And if we can keep this in mind, then, all, then maybe it becomes very easy not to, uh, I mean, uh, put up, I mean, a line or a partition that you are a trans and I'm not a trans, like that kind of a thing. And it is the parents and the society uh, who can imbibe these things among the children and amongst uh, the friends and families and everyone that, no, they are just like us. They are no, not any different uh, human being. And uh, another important thing is that the laws are not 
I'm, I may say that uh, laws are actually there for them because uh, it is a Transgender Act of 2019 that has came into being to protect their rights. So it is a judiciary system which has recognized them and they are protecting and slowly, slowly there are being uh, different kinds of amendments which are even coming into being to protect their rights because we must understand that India one day cannot be a Western country and it cannot have the all the modern thoughts in one day. It is a country of tradition. It's a country of uh, customs. So keeping these things in the mind or bringing these things uh, into everyone's mind is a little difficult. It will take time. But slowly, slowly, the society is changing. It is uh, The society is never a I mean, uh, static. It is dynamic and it is changing. And that is how the laws are being coming up into being. And everyone is recognizing this. And previously, there were no such kind of events happening in Kolkata or maybe in India. But nowadays, we find the rainbow colors. Uh, we find the pride month happening. Everyone is coming and joining. And uh, some of the other way, they are getting the opportunities. And even there are many cafes. There are many restaurants which are for the trans i mean where the trans are working there are different petrol pumps where the trans are working so the employment opportunities are also evolving slowly but yes it, nothing no revolution or evolution can happen in one day it takes time and that is only it's happening but um, it is happening that is something a good and positive side and slowly we are also changing and the human mind is also changing that is a really good and good good and positive sign Yes, dear. That's really nice. We have to transform in the right way. And definitely India too will focus on bringing beautiful balance in the lives of transgenders and all the normal people too, like the men, women and the transgender community, the LGBTQ community, all of them, all of them are included an inclusive society. Dear ma'am, you are also connected with cancer patients. You've been doing your bit for cancer patients. Now, how far could you take us into this beautiful uh, work of yours? which you've been doing for the society? First of all, I have seen my grandmother, my own grandmother, uh, who suffered for cancer. And she died out of cancer only. So when I was very young, it was uh, I was in plus three when having cancer. So since that point of time, it was in my mind that one day I will become a doctor. And that's the reason at the very beginning I said that uh, I wanted to be a doctor, but somehow I came into the legal profession. So since then onwards, I had a keen interest towards the study of oncology, uh, which means cancer, I mean, study on cancer. So uh, from the very childhood, I used to uh, go through the different kinds of books on oncology because my father was into the medical profession from there, he had different books. And due to my uh, grandmother, since she also died of, uh, of cancer, so I saw her going through the different kinds of pain because she was such a strong and bold lady. And then when she was lying on the bed, on her deathbed, she was, I was very, feeling very sad. And I cannot express those days because I was very childhood. But I could still remember those days when I saw her in that condition. So I uh, took, it's a kind of uh, like uh, thing that I took into myself that if ever I could do for something for the children's health, it will be for the uh, child cancer. I also do for the, I mean, elder cancers, adult cancers. I try my best to help them as well. But it's uh, specifically for the children with whom I have more connection. Every year uh, during Rakhi, I go and visit the cancer hospital, the Thakur Cancer Hospital. because And they also know me now very well. So what I do every year on the Rakhi, I try to put uh, Rakhis on their hand along with my, I mean, uh, organization. We go and put Rakhi on their hand. At that point of time, we see there are even children. I mean, I cannot explain a half the, the, that those days. Like we start crying. We start crying standing over there. I could remember the last time I visited last year only. And the child was only one and a half years. Uh, that child came from Bangladesh for uh, his treatment here. He was having injections in front of us. Two, three injections at the same time. The child was crying like anything. And already he was having a few injections connected to his body for the saline and many other things that was constantly being. He was he had already been given radiation. He had already. The mother was crying and telling like, he's the only son that they have. He was just only one and a half years. They are a little bit aged. The parents like the first child died and the second child is now having this thing. 
uh, cancer. So like uh, she was also crying being a mother and when we heard the pain that when the syringe was put in, uh, being put in his body, the, uh, the way he shouted, like that is something it uh, took my heart away. And this is a scenario whenever I go to and see there. So each year I try my best uh, to accumulate a huge fund or as much of the fund I it is possible. Even last year, uh, as I said, uh, there was a large event called Women Year, the biggest fundraising event. Whatever amount we accumulated from there, we donated it to for the treatment of the children of the Thakapukur cancer. Like every year we visit during the Rakhi time, we donate them an amount and as well as we put Rakhis on their hand because they have no one and their life is like for maybe for six months or one year, they're constantly being in, at the hospital. So this is how we are trying my best or rather I'm trying my best to help the cancer patients and fighting with them as well. Yes, dear. That's a beautiful journey, ma'am. You have a beautiful calling of serving others, as you've said, uh, serving humanity, serving God. A beautiful yes. day. Much appreciated, ma'am. Thank you so much uh, for the, giving me this platform where I could share whatever uh, like I wanted to for many days. Like I hope this could inspire the viewers who are who will be viewing this or who are viewing this that uh, I could at least uh, spread some messages to everyone and thanks to Andrea ma'am for giving me this wonderful platform uh, because uh, without her and without this platform I couldn't have been able to share this so once again thanks a lot and thanks for this uh, platform thank you ma'am so much we should really in, in fact be thankful to you because you've taken out time you have a busy schedule and yet you've given us your time and shared everything you've given us clear cut uh, ideas as to how things work in the uh, in in the law system of India or you say the legal system in India and you've also mentioned how one could approach you. Yes, you you are approachable to everyone. My question is, ma'am, uh, is it only for the people of West Bengal you work or people outside India can outside India can connect with you? I mean, the Indians who are staying in other countries, if they face any issue, can they connect with you? Because some of their family members will be struggling over here. Can they access your services or people from other states in India? Can they avail your services? That's the question I have. I have my clients even from UK, USA and Australia. Like whose family is here, but they are residing over there. So I look uh, after their works of from uh, of uh, their those countries as well, and their issues of uh, India as well. So I work uh, even for the people staying abroad, and for the ones staying even outside West Bengal. So everyone can approach me because I'm not that difficult who could be approached. So I can I like till the time I have I'm I'm breathing. I am I will work for the the best of the society and for everyone as much possible as it. How nice. That's really nice. That was the major question. Many of our viewers will ask, how do we connect with, uh, you know, with you, ma'am? Uh, so this is what it is, my dear friends. A lovely session. Today has been a very professional session, getting to know the ins and outs about the legal system and how you could know what is right and wrong in your life and when to take the legal step. Of course, if you would like to connect with our celebrity and guest, you definitely can connect with her. We will share her details in the description below and the YouTube channel, which we will post the video. In that, you will get all the descriptions very clearly. And my dear friends, if you really like this video, if you like what was discussed during this session, share this video with other people. Enlighten, educate other sisters and brothers that yes, legal help is available and you could really live a beautiful life. Stay safe, stay blessed. Thank you, ma'am, so much. Looking forward to the next interaction with you in the near future. It was a nice journey today. Yes, dear. Thank you. In fact, it was an empowering one for us too. Yes, dear. My dear friends, with this, we come to an end to the International Fab Talks for now. Stay connected with us. Like, subscribe and share the video. The main part is share it with others such that others are educated and empowered. Stay blessed. Stay strong. Thanks, ma'am.